Hey, welcome to the Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk to you guys about if statements in C. Now, an if statement is a programming structure which we can use to help our programs to make decisions. So by using an if statement, our programs can actually respond. So in certain circumstances, they can do certain things. And in other circumstances, they can do other things. And if statements are extremely powerful and they're a great way to add some intelligence to our programs. For the purposes of this tutorial, we're gonna be building a function. So we're gonna build a function and it's gonna be called the max function. And basically what this function is gonna do is it's gonna take two parameters, uh, two numbers, and it's gonna tell us which number is the biggest. So I could give it like four and I could give it a 10 and it'll tell us which number is bigger. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna make this uh, function up here and it's going to return an integer and I'm just gonna call it max and it's gonna take as parameters two integers. So it's gonna take an integer num one and it's gonna take another integer num two. And now we'll just make the actual function body. So inside this function, our job is to figure out whether num one is the biggest or num two is the biggest and we're going to return the biggest to the caller. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a variable and it's going to be an integer and I'm just going to call it result and I'm not going to give it a value right away. And what we need to do in this function is we need to figure out which one's bigger. We need to figure out if num1 is the biggest or we need to figure out if num2 is the biggest. And this is a perfect situation to use an if statement. An if statement allows us to check a certain condition and if that condition's true, we can do one thing. And if the condition's false, we can do another thing. So down here, I'm gonna use an if statement. I'm basically just gonna say if, and then we're gonna make an open and closed parentheses and I'm gonna make an open and closed curly bracket. Now, inside of here, inside of these parentheses, we need to specify a condition. This is something that's either gonna be true or false. If the condition inside of these parentheses is true, we're gonna execute the code inside of these curly brackets. If it's false, then we're just gonna move on. So in order to tell whether or not num1 is bigger than num2 or num2 is bigger than num1, we can actually compare them. So down here, I could say if num1, and I can use this greater than sign num2. I'm basically saying if num1 is greater than num2, then I wanna do something. So down here, we can set result equal to num1. If this condition's true, then we're gonna do this. So only when num1 is greater than num2 are we gonna set result equal to num1. So basically by using this if statement, we're able to tell which one is bigger. But here's the thing, what if num1 isn't greater than num2? What if num2 is greater than num1? Well, I can use something called an else statement. So I could come down here and I could say else, and I don't actually need to use an open and close parentheses. I can just make an open and close curly bracket. And the code inside of this else block is gonna execute if the condition up here is false. So if this condition is false, if num1 is not greater than num2, then we can just set result equal to num2. And then down here, finally, we're gonna return result. So depending on whether or not this is true, result is either gonna set equal to num1 or it's gonna be set equal to num2. So let's go down here into our main method and why don't we call this? So I'm actually gonna print out the result. So I'm just gonna say print f and we're gonna be printing out an integer. And over here, I'm gonna call this function. So I'm just gonna say max and I'm gonna pass in two numbers. So we're passing a four and we'll pass in a 10. So I'm passing in a four and I'm passing in a 10 and this is going to return to us whichever one is bigger. In other words, this should return 10. So let's go ahead and run our program. And you'll see over here, we're returning 10. So we got the value of 10 back from this function. Let's try it with the other numbers. So let's make the first number bigger. So now we have 40 and 10. So this should give us 40 back, awesome. So over here, we have an awesome function, right? We're basically checking to see if num one's greater than num two. If it is, then we're gonna return num one. Otherwise, we're gonna return num two. And it's important to note that even if I made these equal, so if I would made it 40 and 40, we're still gonna get back the correct answer. So it's still gonna give us 40 back. So this is the basics of using if statements, right? We say if we specify a condition, if that condition's true, we're gonna execute this code. If that condition's false, we're gonna execute this code down here. 
And that is an extremely powerful structure in our programs. And we can really use this to respond to different input, right? So depending on what the user puts in num1 and num2, we can do different things. But this is just sort of the beginning. So why don't we try to make this function a little bit more complex? So down here, we're allowing the user to input two parameters. So we're accepting two parameters into this max function, num1 and num2, and we're able to spit out which one is bigger. But let's up the ante a little bit. What if we wanted to accept three parameters? So instead of just passing in two numbers, we wanted to be able to pass in three numbers and have the max function spit out the biggest. So over here, we can modify this max function. So I'm just going to make another parameter. So I'm going to say int and we'll call this one num3. So now this function is accepting three parameters, num1, num2, and num3. But in order to figure out which one of these is the biggest, we're actually going to need a more complex if statement. So I'm going to get rid of this and let's just start from scratch. So let's think about this. How can we figure out which one of these is the biggest? Well, what I would recommend is we could say if num1 is greater than num2 and num1 is greater than num3, then we know num1 is the biggest, right? So if num1 is bigger than num2 and it's bigger than num3, we know it's the biggest. If num2 is greater than num1 and num2 is greater than num3, then we know num2 is the biggest. And otherwise, we can just say that num3 is the biggest. So I'm going to show you guys how to do this. And we're actually going to be introducing a couple more concepts for if statements. So I'm just going to say if, and I want to check a condition. So I basically want to see if num1 is greater than or equal to num2 and num3. So down here, I can say num1 is greater than or equal to num2. And now I also want to check to see if num1 is greater than or equal to num3. Because if num1 is greater than or equal to num2 and it's greater than or equal to num3, we know num1 is the biggest. So I can use this special signal here. This is called a logical operator and. And basically, this is going to allow us to put another condition in here. So I could say num1 is greater than or equal to num3. Basically, what this and does is it allows us to put two conditions so we can check two things. And this whole thing is only going to be true if this condition's true and this condition's true. So if one of these guys is false, then this if statement isn't going to get executed. So down here, I'm just going to open this up. And if this is the case, then we want to set result equal to num1. Because if num one's greater than or equal to num2 and num1 is also greater than or equal to num3, then we know num one's the biggest. But here's the thing, we also want to check to see if num2 is the biggest. So if this is false, we also want to check to see if num2 is the biggest now. And we can use something called else if. So down here I could type out else if and I can make another open and closed parentheses. And inside of these parentheses, we can actually check another condition. So if this stuff up here, if this condition's false, then else if is saying, let's come down here, let's check another condition. So here I want to do basically the same thing. I'm going to check to see if num2 is greater than or equal to num1 and num2 is greater than or equal to num3. So if this condition is true, if num2 is greater than or equal to num1 and it's greater than or equal to num3, then we know for a fact that result is going to be num2 because that's the biggest. Now, finally, down here, we can just say else and we can make another open and close curly bracket. And remember, this code is going to get executed when neither of these conditions is true. So here we can just set result equal to num3. So let me walk you guys through this one more time. Up here, we have this if statement. And in addition to checking to see if num1 is greater than or equal to num2, we're also using this special operator called and, and we're checking to see if num1 is greater than or equal to num3. If that's the case, then result is going to be equal to num1. Otherwise, if this condition is false, then we're going to come down here and we're going to check this other condition. So we're going to check to see if num2 is bigger than num1 and if it's bigger than num3. If that's true, then we're going to do this. Finally, if neither of these conditions up here is true, we're just going to go ahead and set result equal to num3. And then we're going to return result. So this looks good to me. Let's test this out and we're going to see if it works. So now when we call max, we need to include three numbers. So why don't we just do one, two, and three. 
And this is basically going to spit out the biggest one, which should be three. So let's run our program. And you can see over here, we get three. So let's try to make one of the other ones the biggest. So we'll make the one in the first slot the biggest. And let's run this again. And you can see that it returns 10. So this function is working. So that's how we can use these ands. And we can also use else if in order to check additional conditions. So the and is used to check more than one condition inside of the if parentheses and the else if is used to check another condition when this condition's false. And so that is actually going to work out pretty well. Now I want to show you guys a couple other things. There's a couple other things that we can do um, with these if statements. So for example, I'm going to come down here and just show you guys some of these. Um, in addition to using that and we can also use something called or. So I'm just going to type out a simple if statement. I could say if three is greater than two. And instead of using and like this, I can use or. An or is basically gonna allow us to check two conditions and the whole thing is gonna be true if only one of those conditions is true. So I could say if three is greater than two or two is greater than five. So only one of these is true, right? Three is greater than two, that's true, but two is not greater than five. So this guy's false. But when we use or, only one of these two conditions has to be true for the whole thing to be true. So if I like printed something out here, like true. Now, when I run my program, we should print true because we're using that or, and you see that we do. But if I was to make this guy false, so if I made this three less than two, now it's not gonna print out true and we can just print out false. So now we're gonna end up printing out false because both of these guys are false. So you can see down here, we're saying false. So the difference between and and or, when we have and like this, both of these conditions have to be true in order for the whole thing to be true and for us to execute this code. When we have or, only one of these guys has to be true. So that's kind of the difference there. And I wanna show you guys a couple other things that we can use. So um, over here, we're using like a less than sign. So for example, if three is less than two, I could also use a greater than sign. I could use a less than or equal to sign. I could use also a greater than or equal to sign. And if I wanted to check for equality, I could use a double, I could use a double equals. So the double equals will check to see if three is equal to two. We can also use one more, which is this exclamation point. An exclamation point basically means not equals. So I could say if three is not equal to two, then we'll print out true. So down here, let's run this and you'll see that we get true. So yeah, there you go. One more thing I want to show you is how we can negate an entire operation. So for example, if I said three is greater than two, this is going to be true, right? So we'd end up printing out true down here because three is greater than two. But I could surround this whole thing with parentheses and I could put an exclamation point right before this. And this is called the negation operator. And it's basically going to negate whatever this ends up being. So if this is true and we put this negation operator here, this whole thing is gonna be false. And so now you'll see, because this is true and we're using the negation operator, we're not gonna end up printing out true. And you can see we just don't print anything. But if I put a false condition in here, like if I said three is less than two, this is false, but because we're negating it, now it's gonna end up being true. So when I run my program, you can see that we get true. So that's sort of the basics of using if statements. And I covered just about everything that you can do. We can use ands, we can use all these different comparison operators, we can use ors, and we can use this exclamation point to negate something. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.